So welcome to the um, Women in Architecture AIA Las Vegas meeting. Um, I will read the antitrust compliance statement. It is the practice of the American Institute of Architects and its members to comply strictly with all laws, including federal and state laws that apply to AIA operations and activities. Accordingly, this meeting will be conducted in full compliance with those laws. All right, right on. Um, so first, we're just going to run through some normal stuff that we do for our meetings. Um, Anna, do you want to update us on next month's meeting, please? Our next month's meeting is on um, building confidence uh, for better negotiations. And we are going to have a very great panel on that one. I think everybody should show up <laughs> to that one, too. Uh, we're going to talk about um, negotiation tactics, how it's different for women, how women perceive negotiation, um, and pretty much just deep dive into that. And I think it's going to be a really interesting topic and may help some of us build some more guts to, to talk about what we need when we need to and not be afraid to do that. And I think that's the 24th of August then. And we also have a happy hour coming up. Oh, thank you. On the 17th? 16th, Monday, Monday the 16th at 530. We're going to meet at Rebar and it'll be a face to face and we're just going to kind of have an opportunity to see everybody, talk to them in person. It's kind of hard doing half virtual. Um, so we're going to give everybody an opportunity to meet, uh, make some better connections, and kind of talk about the committee and where we're headed towards the end of the year and going into 2022. Ooh, yeah. Did you say rebar? Yeah, I forgot. Okay. Jenny Land doesn't open on that. Oh. Day. Yeah. Oh. That was my first. Okay. Just because, you know, I like the idea. Um, okay. I think that's all we have for where we are, what we're doing, right? For right now. Yeah, for the committee. Oh, one more announcement to make is to say that at the end of the year, we were planning on doing like a toolkit for um, firms uh, and how you could incorporate things that we have discovered during the year, um, how to incorporate it into that year, into your HR manuals. But we realized that it's a lot of stuff, and we just started to like break the tip of the iceberg. So we're gonna probably put that off until maybe uh, end of next year, the fall or end of next year. So we're gonna delve into some of these topics a little deeper next year. So look for that. Um, okay. Anything else? That's it. Right on. Thank you. Um, <laughs> in February, we discussed um, owning your femininity. Um, and using that um, because women have a softer way of communicating uh, versus men have more of a gruff kind of exterior, right? And that's the that's the typical man, man versus woman kind of way of um, doing stereotypes. Stereotypes. <laughs> so um, we are pretty gruff. <laughs> you are pretty gruff. I can too. Cheers. Uh, cheers. Uh, I, I'm I mean, you gotta be. You gotta be. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, so that, that's all general, those are generalizations, right? So tonight we're going to explore networking for ourselves and our firms, um, which is probably going to end up being two different conversations, um, and you'll probably see networking or something like it again next year because we're not going to be able to cover everything in only 90 minutes or whatever we have left, 70. Um, so, so we'll try to cover both of those, but we're mostly going to focus on um, ourselves. Uh, versus our firms, we'll, but sometimes it's tied together. Like for people like um, Anna and I, who are also firm owners, um, that's really hard to like take apart, right? Uh, let's see. So, and and for me, networking is a bit nebulous term, um, and I find a lot of us don't even like that phrase, right? Ruth really doesn't like it. She likes branding, um, personal personal branding. Personal branding. Apologies. Uh, Ruth really likes personal branding, and Nancy once told me that my firm is a marketing gold mine, and yet I don't do anything in the leverage it about that. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that I myself can learn some other things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and some people say you should always be marketing yourselves, but I, and, and maybe the rest of you are with me on this. It's very tiring, um, and there are many times I don't even want to do that. Uh, so I just prefer to know a lot of people who can help me get where I need to go or what my firm needs to do. But apparently you're supposed to be 
marketing. Uh, Minja likes to post a lot of stuff, which I appreciate, and I really need to get better about that. So I try. Ruth has actually texted me a couple times because she can't, she couldn't believe. <laughs> hey, right on. She, Ruth couldn't believe that I was actually um, posting stuff like for days on end, or well, for a few days in a row. Who, who's got a hold of your account? And I said, it's, it's a college kid. <laughs> so that that made a lot of sense to her because she knew it wasn't me. Anyway, so maybe today we'll see networking and marketing in a more favorable light, especially when we're talking about ourselves, uh, for those of us who don't like to talk about ourselves. Um, so tonight we have far side is uh, Ruth Berman. She's the owner of Image Words Communication, which is a PR firm here in Las Vegas. Um, and her um, IG is at Ruthie Furman. Is that your personal or is that? It is. It is personal. Um, but she does post some really interesting and bizarre things sometimes, so I'm, you can't help but look. Uh, Nancy Cruz is in the middle, and she's the strategy or strategic director, I guess, for Revolution Engineering. Um, and I've seen a lot of postings from you guys on LinkedIn. I yes. don't see, you don't really have um, Instagram or... No, follow me on LinkedIn if you Twitter. want to know what's happening in Revolution. Because I'm not, I'm not sure what you would talk about, and I don't understand that, so that might be something you talk a little more about yes. or don't. <laughs> and then Ann uh, Trobau, from, she's the marketing director for Turp Consulting, and uh, Twitter is at Turp Consulting. Um, president, I think, for oh, are yeah, you the right? incoming president yeah. for S&P? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So there's yeah. also the guru over here. <laughs> so <good. laughs> so um, these are our fabulous ladies who are going to talk to us today about um, how to how to improve ourselves, our networking, our marketing um, for yeah. ourselves. So I have my question. Some of them have been revised. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so first, I want to talk. I want you to uh, any one of you can pick this up. Whoever's most comfortable. I want to know what networking is. Why are we using that term? Where did that come from? What's the history of it? No, I'm kidding. Um, but really, what uh, what is that? Because so many of us, uh, you know, so many of us don't like it, and maybe we don't really understand it or why we do it. Because I think that I always thought networking was like getting out. And, Ugh, got to go to another AIA meeting and shake some hands and say, Hey, do you know me? Um, but that's not really what it is, right? It's it's a lot more. Than that. So, and Adriana lost her Wi Fi, that's why we don't see her. Um, so, who wants to pick that one up? I'm open. I, go ahead. I, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say that networking is making um, personal connections that are mutually beneficial for both sides. You don't want it to be one sided, you want it to be. Um, you want to meet someone, and you want to meet someone either personally or professionally because you have a mutual interest or a mutual goal. And so it, it has to be a, a mutually beneficial relationship. Um, I think about what Monica said and about how she kind of dreads it and thinks Ugh. about, like, shaking hands. And I think when I first was introduced with the term networking many years ago, it was that. It was like, where are we going after work to go have these forced conversations with people to hand out business cards, and some days I was up for it, and some days I was like, I am tapped out on the peopling for the day. Um, and it seems forced and performative, and I think that is where it gets disingenuous and not effective. Um, I think networking is best when it's simply just relationship building. You know, can you interact and share information and energy with people? Um, I think about even the word network when we talk about computer systems and how it's the ability to link computers so that they can pass information. Um, and when you look at it like that, you're networking at any given moment, you know, whether you're on the elevator, whether you're bringing someone to a meeting, whether you're doing a presentation. So it's not this old archaic way of like, Tuesday at seven, I gotta go to this bar and shake 20 hands, because um, that, that sounds terrible. Like, I, I hate that. <laughs> so. Yes, I really agree with what both of you said, and, and I kind of liken networking in my own mind to sort of like a spider's web. So uh, for me, the diversity of the way that I put myself out there and the way I guide my clients to put themselves out there needs to be on point and, 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 and not too narrow. So I, I'm a really big believer, and that's one of the reasons I'm here at this, architects. Um, event. 
uh, architecture event is I'm a really big believer in the diversity of networking, not only locally and within other industries, uh, but nationally um, through social media. I've gotten really active in Clubhouse, and I've gotten some business through that. It's a new social platform. So it's really about thinking of the spider's web and really hitting as many um, angles of that as possible. And relationships that are not one-sided. It's not only about getting business. I'm sure many of us and, and those of us on, on Zoom have been to an event where someone is thrusting a business card at us <laughs> and following up and wanting to have coffee and you know they're selling. So with me, hmm. um, and I can be very intense in my approach, so I really, really focus on relationships that are not one invited. So I got to say that it has been one good thing about the virtual meetings is at least I don't have to tolerate any of that. <laughs> so if I already know you, it's great. But the unfortunate thing is it's hard to meet um, new people or people and firms who um, can benefit you and your firm. That makes that It has made that really difficult. Um, so, oh, yeah, so why is it important to network yourself and your firm? Um, the short answer is to keep the doors open, right? Like we're all, <laughs> we got to pay the bills, so you need to push your business forward. Um, the more nuanced response is that I think we really, as women professionals, have an opportunity, especially in the AEC space. We are, you know, grabbing space for us to be heard and to do business and to be taken seriously and create opportunities for other women. Um, and I think it's important. I get a lot of wisdom from networking, from things that work and things that don't work. Um, and I am a marketing communications professional from New York City. And I spent a lot of time in the sales environment and closing deals was my goal. Um, and the difference between sales and marketing is that this is long-term relationships. Um, sales, I have an end goal and usually it's very short-sighted. Um, networking, I'm not meeting you to barrage, give you a barrage of questions and to get a goal. I'm here to build this relationship. I don't know what's going to come of it. You know, I don't know what's going to come of today's event. But I am going to speak highly of the work I do and the company I work for, and who knows? It can be a project. It could just be a best friend. It could be, you know, just best practices in the field. Um, sky's the limit. And when you broaden that, I think you really open yourself up to positive things from the experience. Mm -hmm. Yep. I agree. I mean, I feel like I do... I feel like networking is something that you turn off and turn on. Like right now, right. I just met these ladies and anybody else here that I didn't know, and that's networking. So I think just to backtrack a little, like don't think about networking as turning it on or off. Every off, every time you're out and about is you're promoting yourself and your personal brand. Absolutely. So I feel like um, the reason that I like to get out and about and meet people, and we won't use the dirty word networking anymore. But <laughs> I like, you know, I like to, I like to support women. I like to collaborate with women. Mm -hmm. You just never know when Monica might need something. I know someone that I met, you know, mm -hmm. a few months ago, and it's those, it's trying to help people. I like to help people and make those connections. Um, you also never know when you might need, you know, hey, can you help me with this? I don't understand. Explain Clubhouse. You know. That kind of thing. Like, now I know if I need help with that, I could probably reach out to her. So things like that are just, you have to just kind of always be, it's kind of like that. You always have the sensors and the feelers out, and it, it's great to just remember who you met along the way and, you know, what what they were interested in. And don't make it about yourself. Make it about the other people. Um, i trying to think what else I was thinking about to say. You know, I feel like a lot of times I, I do make people part of my tribe and you make lifelong friends, but mostly I'm not always in it for myself. I'm in it to collaborate and um, connect women and, and lift women up. And remember that you, you're not connect, even if you meet someone that's a competitor, don't be their competitor, be their collaborator. I love that. Do you think that idea of networking is, a, sorry, dirty word, uh, <laughs> but is different for men than it is for women? Like that we look at it as more of a collaborative, as a trying to connect people and help people, 
or do you, you know, I don't know if I can actually or, speak for the men, but just from yeah, the experience, same. I mean, a little bit. I feel like women approach it more like friendship and what can we do to help you. And if I had to say, you know, I don't know, you know, that it just whether you're a man or a woman, that cheesy salesman, you know, the oh, link in the gun. Yeah, yeah, the used car salesman thing is out. Like, don't don't act like that. So, I mean, it feels very greasy. One yes, more I mean, elevator speech. Stere- <laughs> stereotypically, I guess, but I don't, you know, I don't really want to speak to the men. I don't know if you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I think we have a man on the call. Too, I so. wouldn't make a blanket statement about yeah. how men network as opposed to how women network. I just think we we're all inclined to lean in on what is natural to us. Yeah. Um, and I think the problem with networking is that we step out of ourselves and do something that's foreign. Mm. As opposed to just being authentic, um, I think about our core values at Revolution. It's team empowerment, education, and pride in product. Mm. And I think mostly about pride in product. It is easy for me. I am proud about what Revolution does. I am proud about what I do. That it's not networking. It's conversing and being proud about what I do every single day. Um, and I would hope that men and women alike are doing the same thing. Yes, and you know, my I, I agree with what everyone said, and um, you know, as far as the difference between how men and women network, I I am seeing that in my own experience start to change. I'm involved in a lot of different groups. I do some volunteer work for the Latino Bar Association, which is men and women. I'm involved in the Urban Chamber. I'm involved in a women business owners group. So I'm involved in a lot of different groups, and I am starting to see that change, and I seeing it change as I kind of own my own approach and my own confidence a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I just, think it's, I just think that it's important for us to just, you know, be confident in our approach and also something that I have learned. I've had my own business for 20 years. Before that, I was a journalist. And um, something that I've learned is to truly have no expectations because sometimes in relationships, in business and personally, um, I, I really like to give more than I get, but um, if I am positive and if I keep in touch with people, I just got a client that I met 20 years ago and we kept in touch on LinkedIn. So networking isn't only about events and groups that we're a member of. It, it's become a lot broader, and um, it's really just about being positive and not having a lot of expectations. Yeah. Um, so one of the other things um, I was wondering about is why is it important for people, this is going to be on the business side, so people in the firm, women in the firm, like how, why is it important for people in your firm to also network with for themselves as well as for your firm and how, you know, what's a positive way to do that? Because, you know, we already have to do that as owners, but, you know, how do you, you know, how do you encourage that in your staff? I think, I mean, and I'm not an owner of Revolution, um, although I'm very close to the owner. Um, if it was all based on the owner and what he did, we would not survive. Um, and that's not, that's nothing about him. I think that's just any owner across the board. Um, you have to create a culture, you, you know, no man is an island in the business, you know. And the minute it becomes this egomaniac, you have a team that's unhappy, and you feel that. You feel that when they interact with your clients. You feel that when they're, you know, dealing with partners, and that'll really hurt your reputation and hurt your company and your bottom line. Um, How do you encourage your team to network? So I work in an engineering firm. Um, I came out of nonprofit, so this is my first major stint in AEC, and my first day of work. I'm going to tell a a joke and I hope I don't offend anyone. But the joke that was told to me on my first day of work was um, what is the ideal birth control for engineers? And (laughs) the punchline is um, their personality. (laughs) So I think about that and I love my guys, but networking is not their forte. And thank God for that because I have a job. Um, (laughs) But what I tell them to do is to just constantly keep me in the loop if they're happy, and my job is to make sure culture is high. Um, So they are walking billboards of revolution. 
you know, how they work, how they enter a call on a Zoom, how they talk to their client, how they send an email, is constantly networking and enforcing our brand. Um, and that's all I need them to do. I need them to be happy, whole employees. And it's leadership's job to make sure that that's consistent. Um, I don't expect them to go out and do something that's out of their nature. Um, it would do us a disservice, and it's not fair to them. Um, so they keep producing awesome plans, and things pass and permit, and they're happy. And, you know, in that way, we move revolution forward. I, I, I love what you said. You know, the only thing that I want to add to that is just to kind of piggyback about what you said about leadership's role. I have a client in the homeowners association industry, and there was an awards gala um, earlier this month, and uh, they had some of their admin staff at the gala. And that made me really happy because they're really empowering um, these team members and bringing them in. So I really think it is leadership's job to um, enable and support various people on their staff because, you know, like you said, it's not just about the owner. Right. So I just, but, but I think that, you know, and, and I try to do that with my clients and with, with, my, with my staff is include them, invite them to two events, to attend Zooms, because I think that it helps them kind of understand, helps them not only be better at their jobs, but like their jobs more. Right. Okay, now, now I hear another topic coming up, which is um, how do you encourage staff to, how, how, do you, how do you lead and encourage staff to help you network and market? Especially, you no, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at you to say that's that's a future topic because that's that sounds like a huge thing right there because now I'm like oh my god I have like ten questions just coming out of that one and that's not really what I want to cover today so I think we're gonna yeah, have to let's do we're gonna have to look at that in a uh, future topic I think okay. it's really important especially for small companies because yeah. I mean everyone's yeah. busy mm -hmm. and for them to you know, especially like the admin level. I, I thought that made me so happy. Yeah, I, I used to work for this firm, and um, during our weekly staff meetings, not all of them, but frequently, the principal of the firm would say, and we weren't we weren't that big. We we're like 12, 15 of us, something like that. The principal for, um, owner would say, you know, we we really need all you guys to get out there and um, market and do some networking to get us more work. And I'm like, I. I don't know what that means. I don't know how to do that. No right, right, exactly. So, right. so I think that's a whole other topic, and we'll, we will have to do that. Um, so here we go, Ruth. Um, I <laughs> so Ruth has given me a hard time over the many years uh, for my <laughs> lack of um, PR prowess, uh, and so public relations or. Um, Personal branding, how does that fit into networking, and what the hell is it? Well, you just totally beat me up, so I do want to defend myself. <laughs> <laughs> she has really She's tried allowed. to help me. She really has. I have helped Monica. Um, I, <laughs> and it's been my pleasure because she's amazing. We, we, we love Monica. So um, I think it's really what, what PR, and PR really encompasses a lot of things. But with PR, you're constantly giving yourself a seat at the table, and you are helping yourself or others in your organization shine brighter. So that may be an award nomination. That may be promoting a win. That may be taking a photo, doing a video, posting on social. So PR, to promote your personal brand, really means a lot of things. Um, so if you stay silent, you're really missing a lot of opportunities. So with Monica, who, who um, is, is an amazing uh, woman-owned business architect, I, when I first met Monica, I saw that there were a lot of things that she was doing that she was not telling anyone about. So I kind of helped her and gently guided her, maybe not so gently. I was going to say, so I don't think it was gentle. <laughs> <laughs> Just to kind of put herself on a bigger stage. And I know that Nazreen was here on the call did the same thing. So, yeah, so that's kind of a short answer. It really does encompass a lot of things. And then through the news media, um, Monica had some opportunities to be featured in some publications, to do some TV interviews. So everything that you do PR-wise really acts as an asset for your personal brand. So 
photo of you doing a news interview, a, a link um, to a news article, the backlinks that um, an online press release exposes you to. So it's really, it's really the nature of the beast these days, and, and if you don't do it, you're just missing opportunities. Absolutely. Hope that was a good okay, so that I have missed a, a lot of opportunities, people. <laughs> And every now and then I get a little I get a, a little loving nudge, sometimes not so loving, from Ruth that says, What was that on your Facebook or on um Instagram? Like I, I don't know. It wasn't it good? No, it was not good. Well, I did not, I'm not saying that it wasn't good. I'm just she saying. She didn't say it wasn't good. She's very critical. I'm nice. I'm big on brand layering and um, mm, tagging like other that. organizations. And, and, and Monica does a lot. So brand, brand layering is also a part of PR, is tying in everything you do to your personal brand. Can you go into brand layering just a little bit more to give a better idea of what it is? Sure. Can you? Okay, so I don't know that everybody could hear that, but um, Anna has asked Aunt, um, Ruth to go a little bit more into what brand layering is, so we understand that a little bit better. Sure. So brand layering means a lot of different things. So it's it's connecting your brand and promoting yourself in conjunction with other businesses. So let's say that your company has a charity event. You are layering yourself with the nonprofit organization. Let's say you bring in another business to be part of that. You are laying yourself, layering yourself with the other business. So what that does is it gives you more buzz on different platforms because the different groups are going to promote you along with themselves and then the media, the news media, is going to find you a lot more interesting because you're more than just one local company mm -hmm. promoting yourself. Some some promotion to me is what I call lame, which stands for look at me every day. And I got that years ago from my friend Danny. So brand layering makes you less lame. <laughs> <laughs> so so really I should I should be um You already do. I do, but I'm thinking about how these two, Revolution and Ari are both Adriana's not back with us yet. Um like they're, I did. but they're all on the NPHY project with us, right? And um, I didn't know that. Yeah, and right? How would you know that? And um, <laughs> we're out. We're out to bid right now. So maybe I need to start talking more about that, and then how we are linked together, and then yep. Innova and and the other firms who are all with us on that. Yep. That's been a five-year project. And, and tell everyone what that stands for, because oh, in case why. Right. So so also another thing to keep in mind is um, when you're talking about marketing, branding, network, all that stuff is. Ruth tells me not to use acronyms very much. Uh, so NPHY is Nevada Partnership for Homeless Youth, and we've, um, our firms have been working on that for quite some time. Um, and so we're very pleased that it is out to bid, uh, which NPHY, Nevada Partnership for Homeless Youth, is also very pleased that it's out to bid. So coming soon. Okay, so did you get all of your brand layering information? Thank you. <laughs> So we'll see if we have to touch on that more when we talk about um, leadership's job to enable and support staff in our networking and marketing strategy. Um, let's see. So one of those things too, I want to that kind of links up with that is how how and why is PR and networking important to young and even well experienced female architects or engineers or you know people in our in our industry who don't intend to become the firm owner. Like, how, how is that good for you? Because by joining up with a variety of organizations when I was um, younger, I, I learned about more people and I would go to different firms because um, it, once I left one firm, I'd go to another because I had those contacts. But there's really more to it than just jobs. There's some other stuff involved in that, right? So sometimes it is about work and sometimes it's about your personal life. So like how what's how's a good way to do that or what's a, what's a good strategy for us to think about when we're doing that? Nasreen really could use that right now. <laughs> I was gonna say, um I think it's a a blend between personal and professional. Huh? When I first moved to Las Vegas I hate to say twenty something years ago. I got a job at R&R &R Partners, which is a, a large advertising, marketing, PR firm here in town. And so I can basically, I have two things that 
kind of led my spider web of connections. It was R and R partners, and it was um, the Junior League of Las Vegas. So I joined a great firm when I got into town in in my um, discipline, and then I joined what I thought was a great nonprofit. And between those two, those spider webs have gone together. It's led me to this job here today. It's led me to SMPS. It's led me it led me into a leadership role. So I think if you think back. You can probably, you know, all of my roads kind of just go through those areas. So I feel like if you don't have a good personal, find something that you're passionate about. If you don't have a good professional, you know, obviously you're here today. There's, I'll, I'll promote SNPS if you don't know what that is. It's an acronym. But, <laughs> but um, so, you know, I, we belong, my firm belongs to both AIA and SNPS. So there's, there's multiple, fa- it can be faceted and layered. You don't have to pick one or the other, but I would definitely pick a strong personal and a strong professional or multiple on each. And I think that's how you, forgot what the topic of the question was, but I think that's how, that's how you build a strong, you know, strong connections. And I feel like if you're just starting out or you're a seasoned professional, it doesn't matter. You need those strong connections. There you go. You brought it back around. Did I bring it back around? Okay. Yeah, there you go. I also yeah. think that, you know, the word, like networking, the word brand sometimes has negative connotations. Yeah. You think of like, you know, famous people who spend time and money on social media all the time just pushing their brand. Um, and I think as a young professional, a young female professional in AEC space, um, reputation and growth. And that's what I think is the most important about honing in and figuring out what your individual brand is. And it's not, I want this person to walk away and know you know, that I've brought in this amount of money, I can get this amount of money, um, I do this for my owner, but more so, where is your value system? Where is your work ethic? Um, And I think those are the ways that when I present my brand and I present myself, um, you really walk away being like, I have a sense of what this woman is about. And if she's aligned with these people, these partners, this company, then they're more than likely in conjunction. Um, And I think that is what's important as a young professional, even if you have no aspirations of owning. I have no aspirations of owning my own company. Um, I look at it. (laughs) It just happens. It just happens. Um, But I have no. I know, right? Um, But I have no problem supporting Chris and his vision. Um, But very, please know, I walk in and I'm promoting my work at Revolution. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's because I'm really proud, again, pride in product, right? If you're proud of your day, you're presenting that brand, and I think that really resonates with people. I love that. I, I love that, and I really feel the same way. I actually um, have had the opportunity, um, since I've owned my own business, and even prior to that when I was working in corporate, and even prior to that as a journalist, to really mentor those younger than me. I ran intern or intern groups that you know magazines years ago. I just think that it's 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 not only important for sort of job growth and, and getting other opportunities, but it just makes it just makes work more enjoyable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, it it also the contacts that I have made through some of my relationship building. Um, over the years in Las Vegas, has really built me a community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and, I, I and, and I recommend that to a lot of the, it seems to be mainly younger women that I have mentored. And I'll, I'll bring them with me. A lot of times I'll pay for their, their admittance, you know, to, to an event or, or a Zoom or a class and really encourage them to kind of spread their wings. So you're saying when you join these organizations, you should look for that mentor in that organization. Yes, I've always done that myself, and I'm my natural tendency is to be a little shy and a little socially awkward. What? Um, I, I doubt that. It's I'm the, not it, it, it is. I fake it beautifully. <laughs> I have had, had a lot. I've had a lot of practice, but but honestly, I was at an event a couple weeks ago, and I really have seen my growth because I forced myself to sit at a table where I don't know anyone, and you know I do all the things. But um, so I've I've learned through success and failure, you know, what works best. And, and uh, it, it, it's really important, especially early in your career. I would add to look for a mentor and look for a mentee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. Um, yep. especially in this space that is, let's just say it, white and old and male. 
so, you know, we have an opportunity if we're in the room to really grab someone and be like, I'm going to give you the knowledge I have. Maybe you, I'll spare you some of the heartache because some of it was hard, mm -hmm. you know, growing in my career. And if I can spare some 26-year-old woman, you know, with uh, best practice and she yeah. can navigate the world, then yay, you know, like then I've done a good job. That, that is a good idea. That is um good information because what we used to do as architects, and I think it's changing, is um, we used to say, well, it was really hard for me, and so you should also mm -hmm. have to put in all of your hard work, yeah. the same yeah, crap that no. I had to do. It's like, well, Let's that's so other. unfair. It's so unfair. Like, if you learn something, I don't know why you can't, right. like, start at, a, at the next level, and then we go even further instead of starting all over at ground zero. I was just going to add real quick about, about building your network is be patient and let it grow organically. This is not a forced situation. This is a join something that you're passionate about. Let your true passion come through. Try to find, you know, hopefully we're all in a job that we feel passionate about. But all of that will shine through and it will attract people. I have to say that is kind of how it worked for me. Like joining one thing and then everything changed after that, right? So uh, I think my network is pretty... Uh, wide right now in terms of the kind of work that we do, um, especially in the community, and we have a lot of contacts, right? So that took a really long time to figure all of that out and who um, and who to talk to and who to keep as your friend um, and who to let go. Mm -hmm. And like I think Anna, it's, no, it's easier to, to look Anna. to look in the rearview mirror and see, oh, that you know, now I can see it. Yeah. When it's happening, it's you can't really see what's happening, but right. just keep at it. And, and it'll happen, and you can look back, oh, that's how, you know, oh, that's what happened. That's the spider web that happened. That, that's a really good point. Uh -huh. I, earlier on in my career, I I did a lot of things out of what I call H&O, habit and obligation. Mm -hmm. oh. So I would just continue doing things. Oh, I do this. This is what I do. So I've been better. I've been a lot better recently um, at uh, taking that left turn. Mm -hmm. I've but, also been thinking more recently that I don't have to do the same thing everybody else does. Because yeah. when I started the firm, I thought we we're going to be corporate, just like all the firms I've worked for in the past. But we are quite a bit different um, than other firms. We also require you to take off your shoes when you walk in the door. So, um, you know, so, so just little quirky things that we do that I think um, memorable. Yeah, that are memorable, yeah. and that you know your your clients will run back memorable. into your office sometimes to kick off their shoes, and you know just want to cry on your couch because. You know, they're having a bad day, but that was a really weird one and a true story. <laughs> uh, I remember like, that story. Now we know where to come, <laughs> right? right. So, I'll so be there tomorrow. He's got a cow, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Except it's right so now, nice. and we just moved, so right now we have paper on the windows. It's not quite that um, comfortable until we get the <laughs> curtains up. You know, being memorable is, is, is so mm -hmm. important, and I used to be the opposite. I used to not want to stick out. So now, oh, me too. Um, so yeah, I, that's something that I really have kind of owned my weirdness. Yeah, um, I think that's really important. Bright colors. <laughs> I wear hats to events. Like I, you know, I'm happier when I'm more myself. So Absolutely. Uh, I think that's important in relationship building as well. I think we appreciate that more too, right? Because the, you're just like another another person that's just like the other person who's just like the other person, and I, I don't remember you at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I did get into the habit of putting um, notes about whoever I met in my phone. Mm. Either I would, um, either it's somebody I never wanted to talk to again, <laughs> or it was some quirky thing about them that I would remember next time I talked to them. Mm -hmm. And I did have this one. Um, those are great tools. Client. Who, those are great tools. And one client who I would say, "Hey, happy birthday!" or so and so something or another happened on this. Do you remember that? And they're like, "How do you remember that?" Very. I don't know. I have a really good memory. <laughs> um, but it was just good no trick. Right? Good trick of the just trade. Stuff sure. I would hide. But um, anyway, people so, like that people like you know they like. How did you know that they like yeah. to feel important? Yeah, remember that the they name. made an impression. <laughs> oh, the name is the worst. And and I'm just the worst about names. So. But just be honest. I think that's mm -hmm. the the what I would like everyone to get away from. Come take away yeah. from this is. Be authentic, be organic, you know, figure out who your brand is and just be your truest self. I think in my 20s and my 30s, I spent so much time doing things out of habit and obligation. Ugh. 
doing so many times times wearing a mask, being like, how does that person feel in my presence? As opposed to, this is what it is. <laughs> and if you like it, great, let's do business. If you don't, not a problem. I realize the more times I put on a mask to gain a relationship or gain business, I ended up so frustrated in the relationship, working with these people who were not aligned with my values. And, you know, now it's very clear, you know, our whole mission is to be revolutionary. If you're a partner who's not revolutionary in how you think and how you treat your employees, we don't really want to do business with you. Because then you start seeing those things permeate in other ways. And then you're frustrated and you're like, how did I get caught up with this guy? Well, that's because day one you were putting on a mask as opposed to this is who I am and we're not aligned. And there's no judgment, no hard feelings, but this isn't going to work. So let me go here. Yeah, and get, get be okay with that. Yeah. Right? That, yeah, this isn't not exact. <laughs> that takes bravery because it's so easy in my business as a PR firm to try to tell like tell clients what they want to hear. hear. But um, it takes bravery and um, confidence to pivot. Good for you. And also faith yes. that your business will be okay. I tell Chris oh, all the time, yeah. especially in this last year with the political climate where it was, it was really clear where people were kind of on certain things, and I just was like, do we want these dollars if they're not aligned with our values? Mm -hmm. um, but in the middle of COVID, when work is slowed down and you need to keep the doors open, we had a lot of tough conversations. And at the end day, we were like, what's the name on the door? You know, we're revolutionary. You know, so we will attract like-minded people, and that's what happened. Um, and thank God for it, but it was like, we had to just be faithful and be like, you know what, this is who we are, this is our brand, and let's see what comes of it. And know that you're enough. Right? Absolutely. Ooh, you are enough. You are enough. You are enough. I mean, that on a shirt. Yeah. Right? <laughs> One of our goals is to, um, our goal is to be brazen. So we're constantly trying to do that, it. right? Um, so that's what I wanted to add. We were kind of talking about the whole benefits, right? But really, what are the like dumb things we do? What are the mistakes that we as, I guess it's people, but really I want to talk about like what do women do that are mistakes in our in like promoting our own brand, promoting our ourselves? Like what are those things that we keep doing? Oh, you shouldn't have done that. I've made all the mistakes. Um, <laughs> we try too hard. Yeah. I think sometimes we, uh, especially for me in this space, I'm not an engineer, but I've, you know, that's not my background. So the technical experience is lacking. Um, and there are times I'm in a room with all of these men who have X amount of years of experience and they can be a little bit condescending. Um, and I try too hard to get them to like me. Um, in my 20s, and I, I'm ashamed to say it, um, in a sales environment with a high commission structure, I presented the wrong thing. Mm. Um, and there were times that I marketed other assets <laughs> that I no longer market. Um, if you're not interested in doing business with me because you can't see my cleavage, then we don't do business. Mm. Um, so as a younger woman, I think I was, I think that was how I was groomed, right? Use all of this and you to, were successful. And you'll we were. be successful. We were. <laughs> um, and now I'm like, no, I'm using this, and if this. <laughs> you don't get to see this, then keep it moving. Um, that was a huge mistake for me. And it was, again, this performance. It was constantly, I would, and that's why it was more stressful. It was like, oh, my God, who am I going to meet? And what do I have to do to make them like me? More exhausting, too. Oh, it's my God. Exhausting. It's exhausting. Yeah. Um, and it's not effective. No. It's, it's not, not long-lasting. And you, may, <laughs> you make fake relationships that don't prosper. Um, that was a huge mistake for me. And I think now... It's again, it's that bravery, right? It's like, mm -hmm. this is what it's going to be. Um, but I'm also, you know, I'm 41. It's a different life experience. Where I'm like, I don't play those games. That's anymore. the stuff we need to teach those 26 year olds. <laughs> right. For sure. Exactly. And that's when you grab a mentee and you be like, stop doing that. Yeah. yeah. Stop with the flip and you the giggle. You don't need to do that. You, you don't, don't need to do, do that. that. <laughs> you know, just stand in who you are and what you bring to the table. And I truly believe the right people will attract, be attracted mm -hmm. to that. Just I'd be attracted to the smart. Yeah. I think um, to add to that, uh, we talked about this already, but don't be someone that you're not. Um, some of the biggest, I think some of the biggest mistakes I made, or I still make sometimes, is 
getting out of your comfort zone. Like, don't go to a place and sit with the two people that you know and don't talk to anybody else. I think that's the <laughs> easiest thing to do, but you cannot do that. You need, if, if, if you know, if it's so comfortable for you, you, you need to step outside of your comfort zone. Mm. So don't stick with the people that you already know. And I that, that happens because I'm so excited to see people, especially now that I haven't seen them in a long time, right. but you, you have to just take a step back. Certainly don't ignore those people, but also be able to move on and meet new people. Um, and then I think one thing that we haven't talked about is when you meet new people and you feel like you've made a genuine connection, you know, make sure that you follow up. Did you promise to send them something? Did you, you know, why don't you reach out on LinkedIn and connect with them that way? Why don't you send them an email telling them how great it was to, to meet them? And I also think that um, don't make it about yourself. Like, don't, you need to ask them questions and engage them. And like we were talking about, try to find something that you can remember about that person for next time. Do they have a dog? You know, what, what's their hobby? Ask them what their goals are. Um, something that makes them feel important as well. So don't make it about you. And I, I feel like um, mine is getting out of my comfort zone. I totally agree with everything that you both said. Um, I call myself a comfort addict. Mm-hmm. My natural tendency is I love being comfortable and stretching myself makes me very uncomfortable. So I do it all the time. Uh, and one, one, thing, uh, one thing that I, I will say kind of along those lines is I like to say perfect is the enemy of good, and I did not make that up. Um, do something, say something. So as a public relations company owner, I'm a really big believer in if we wait until something is perfect, we are not going to do it. And I know that about myself. So yeah. whether it be the um, social media post, whether it be um, a press release, or um, a video. I do a lot. I'm a big believer in video content that I use, and I embed YouTube links and press releases and that kind of thing. I'm a big believer, say something and say something now. Because especially um, with what's happened over the last year and a half, you never know when breaking news is going to make you less interesting. Mm. So do it now. Mm. I got that random one. That is such a good point. I find myself... I appreciate the fact that you do the videos, Ruth, uh, and they're very embarrassing for me. Like having to like be on social media or just do a shoot little, <laughs> one of those little Facebook Live things. I'm like, oh my god. I think Naz and I did that one time, and it was just it was a little goofy and awkward. But um, I, you know, I just don't think that things are interesting enough to other people. Sometimes, like, oh, well, I guess this is kind of interesting, but. It's not really that interesting to me, but I, I just don't know what other people are going to find interesting. So. Well, I mean, the key the key is is to keep them very brief because people really do not have much attention span. Right. But you never know because we're interacting with such a huge universe of different personalities, and you never know if you don't try what's going to get the attention. So I've gotten gigs for my goofy minute, my goofy uh, fifty second, fifty nine second videos. So you never know. You Some know. of them are kind of goofy, which I appreciate. <laughs> so not so serious all the time. Well, usually not very serious. Rarely serious. And they're authentic. And sometimes I make fun of myself and I laugh at myself and I talk about things that didn't go well and I recommend that my clients do the same thing. So, yeah. It's just doing something, saying something, not waiting until things are perfect, which I think is um, the natural tendency for a lot of women is right. to wait until they feel perfect to put themselves out there. And then we don't do anything. Exactly. Oh, nothing. yeah. Done that many times. No, nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is probably just for Nancy, and I guess we'll all figure out how we can participate in that. And if you have, que- if you have questions online, please share. Um, is networking different for women of color than it is for white women? Um, everything is different for women of color than white women in America. Um, and I don't mean to make anyone uncomfortable, but I am transparent and I'm just going to keep it totally real. Um, I don't think I have all the time to dissect all the nuances of the challenges that women face in any industry, and then you throw on the layer of racial and um, ethnicity and cultural differences. And I think... um, the road is narrow in our workspace, um, and I think, like Monica said, there there is something to they need to kind of earn their place and you know put in the time and the work that we have put in, um, and I think we all 
you know, white, brown, blue, green, doesn't matter, um, need to realize that the space needs to be shaken up in general. Um, and how, as women, can we lift each other up regardless of our racial makeup? Um, with that said, though, specifically to women of color, um, honor your spirit. When you feel a microaggression, hear it. I think sometimes one of the mistakes I make, too, and, and this isn't even necessarily always racial, I would feel someone's energy and be like, that was off-putting, but I would still try to push forward and, and make something happen out of that engagement, as opposed to being like, I don't need to get into the why. I need to step away and put my effort somewhere else. Um, and I think there have been a lot of times that I felt that. I mean, I to be totally candid, in my 20s, I used to put Nancy Morning, which was my married name, on my resume um, instead of Nancy Cruz Morning um, because it got more hits. Mm. I used to get more phone calls just as Nancy Morning. And then I realized, again, when my interaction with these people, I didn't enjoy it. And I was like, let me just put Nancy Cruz, and whoever is willing to work with a Nancy Cruz is the person I want to work with. Um, but I didn't honor my spirit, and I was so fixated on being in the room. I need to be in the discussion that I will do anything, or I will shut my mouth, or I will allow someone to treat me as less than, so I can be in the conversation. And I don't shut my mouth anymore. Um, I'm not in every conversation, but I also don't want to be in every conversation. Um, but I definitely recognize that there are discrepancies and that marginalized people, whether it's racial or gender or sexual orientation or religious affiliation or political affiliation, there's so many things that can divide us. And the minute we recognize that that's not right, we then allow people to grow and, you know, be built up. And I think, you know, as white women, you have such a wonderful privilege. And instead of being in your feelings about it, recognize it and be like, I have power here. I have power to change the entire landscape. And there's so much power in sisterhood and helping each other and changing the landscape, you know, together. Um, so that's what I, you know, honor your spirit. Things don't feel right, let it go. Good place. That, that, is, that is really good. That's good amazing. Point. I mean, I have a white Jewish Midwestern woman's lens. However, as the owner of a public relations firm, one of my core values is to amplify diverse voices. So I really appreciate what you had to say. Thank you. What we got? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, Nazreen. How are you all? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. I just, I don't have any questions. I just wanted to say thank you. And I've taken in a lot of what everybody <laughs> has said. <laughs> I guess he wants to say a quick hi. Go and say hi. 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 Be true to yourself. And that's yeah. where you meet the kind of people that you want to be involved or, you know, become friends with or have a relationship with. And yeah, and then the last point about uh, um, not being something that you're not and not accepting and just walking away from anything that doesn't feel right or doesn't fit. Yeah. I would say yeah. that, that is the way that is the way to go. I mean, I, I, I always feel I have three things working against me. Being a woman, being black, and being Muslim, and very visibly Muslim. Right. And but all those things are interesting, right? They are, they are interesting. Not everybody thinks all three of those are, you know. So I just think all of those are interesting together. 
And I yeah, Green uh, helped me with a media interview about um, Ramadan. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I normally smile. At it. If I get a bite, and I, I found that it's always worked for me, I'd smile. And if they stare, I'd smile even bigger. <laughs> because I want that they get uncomfortable and go away. <laughs> I, I really do like honor your spirit and hear it. That's a I really like that phrase. Yeah. Just because I found myself many times not doing that myself, yeah, trying to twist yourself into a pretzel as to someone who somebody else wanted you to be. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's the that's how we were groomed mm-hmm. for sure, and that's we were learned. groomed to how do we serve these people? How do we serve our men? How do we serve this environment? What can and I do to make them like me? Yeah. How can I be real? Agreeable. It's a great word. Yeah, and I think being comfortable with the fact that you're not gonna, not everyone's gonna agree, and I gotta go home and agree with myself. And there were too many nights that I made lots of people happy, and I would come home being like, oh, that was, I feel gross. Oh. And I don't want to feel gross, you know. Um, Honestly, there's a question on. Oh, Oh, there is. How do you navigate? When you must retain uh, relationships with people who do not align with your value. Oh. Mm, good question. Sometimes yeah. I find it hard to remain authentic in those situations. No kidding. Yeah, if they don't agree with anything that you are. If you can't kick them to the curb. Okay, yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah, you can't. You can't. Sometimes sometimes you can't. Sometimes you okay, can't. so we have a relationship with an architect. Me? Not you. <laughs> we have a relationship with an architect that really makes me struggle. And I've had a long conversation with two of their principals, and one of them just said totally out of pocket, offensive, terrible things. And I looked at Chris and was like, I don't want to work with these people anymore. And he was like, We're on our way. Um, and we are slowly backing out of this partnership. Um, but what, and I thank God that I actually work for a company where I am supported, that I can communicate that this man was disrespectful and this is not what we want to do moving forward. But we do have a relationship already established. Um, what do I do personally and what does my firm do? Personally, um, I keep our interactions very short. Um, I still was very clear that what he did and what he said um, was not appropriate. Um, I didn't help him. I did. I told him and I told his partner. Um, and in turn, now I just deal with the partner. Um, it wasn't an easy conversation and people are, people are who they are. So I was not the first woman or the first person to be offended by this person's behavior. So it wasn't like, oh man, Nancy's just saying crazy things. It was like, oh, you too? (laughs) And I was like, yeah, and I'm, we're done with it. Um, I don't like the two part. Yeah, I will say as a firm, what we have done is we incorporate a PIA fee. A PIA (laughs) fee is a pain in the ass fee. So, do I throw on an extra 10% on the proposal? And if he thinks we are, you know, I can get MEP for less, please feel free to do so. Um, if I'm going to interact with this person and he's going to be disrespectful to my engineers, we need a, that needs to come at cost. You don't get to disrespect me for free. Um, so as a firm, I incorporate that in the, in the fee. So as a firm, this is how you guys are handling it, but, like, how do you deal with it if you are the staff of a larger firm and, and and you're trying to find your place in there because you know somebody has said something derogatory about you but they didn't know it was about you hmm. in front of you you know what I mean like they don't know who you really are and so they're saying uh, it about you or so for me one time I went into a meeting with an intern who was a man and um And the client immediately started talking to my intern, Mm. right? And he said, as if he was the architect. And so he let him finish, and he goes, I don't know if she's the architect. And I'm like, I was fuming by then, right? And so I didn't, but I didn't, we still work with that company, Mm -hmm. just not that person, right? But I didn't, I, I think that there could have been another way to handle that, but I think what Dawn's looking for is like, 
she doesn't own the firm. Mm -hmm. So if your firm can't do anything about that, and if like, let's say that well, you just started the project, like how do you how do you deal with that? I mean, when it's come up at our firm a few times, I feel like um, Dawn should talk to her immediate supervisor and let them know the situation because if you don't have that first level support, then perhaps long term you need to go to a different company right. that's willing to support you. Um, at our firm, we had some an issue with one client being really, um, what do you call it, um, disrespectful to like the support staff that was answering the phones. And so they told the person, you know, our, our PE, and he actually talked to the client and just said, you know, if you have any issues, like you can unload on me, you know, if there's an issue, but don't unload on, you know, they're just trying to do their job. So in the future, we would also choose, we, we, choose, to, we, we choose to work not work with a lot of people, to be honest. So we would just navigate away from them. But if you're in a situation where your company isn't supportive of you or the employees, I mean, that's, that's um, especially if it's like, you know, sexual harassment or something, that's a violation. Yep. So you shouldn't have to put up with that, basically. I would, I would definitely uh, see who you could speak to at your company. But is there any way, I mean, not every situation uh -huh. is like right, right. that heavy. Well, so if just you're navigating mm, those day to day uh, apples. Yeah, when I I would in turn uh, treat them with respect, and if you can, you know, if you have some sort of a relationship and you you feel comfortable letting them know why it's not okay, what's happening, you know, I don't want her to go off and go off the handle and get fired or something. You know, right. I mean, this is like kill them with kindness, treat them with respect, and and see if you can get that in return. Not sure if that's I'm gonna push back on that. No, <laughs> I am not going to coddle or acquiesce or you know um, work with this person with kick gloves. Um, if you're disrespectful and inappropriate, you're gonna be told you're disrespectful and inappropriate. If I work in a firm that does not support that and allows me to be disrespected, that is not the place for me to work. Yeah. Um, Revolution engineering, if you need a place to work. Um, we're not playing that game. But um, I will say that it, it is challenging, though. There there mm -hmm. are the daily assholes where it's not this big egregious thing. Yeah. And you're like, I can report that to HR. It's just like, it's the microaggressions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's, it's, it's the person. Yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, the, we, it's, I, it's the energy, yeah. right? Like, networking is about exchanging information and energy. So I'm exchanging information and energy with you, and you are saying things or doing things that are problematic, then how do I protect myself? And this is not just professionally. Personally, you know, should you have to figure out what your anything is. I tell my co my team all the time, you can have anything, you can't have everything. Mm -hmm. um, if your anything is making money, you are going to take a whole lot of crap from a lot of people. And I'm not judging that. You know, if you want to make money and do it. My anything is not about making money. My anything is about feeling good about myself and being proud of going to my children at the end of the day and being like, mommy's had a respectful day and is a respectful person. Um, so that's my anything. So all the other stuff, if I don't get that, I'm like, I can't have everything. Um, but I will be valued at the end of the day. Um, so I don't know, Dawn, I, I hope this helps you. <laughs> um, I think, you know, there's certain people relations that require delicacy and being sensitive. And then there are other times as women, we just need to say, no, no, you're not going to do that to me. Um, those days are over, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, I feel that in the past, um, because of my addiction to comfort, <laughs> I would think I had I had hit a finish line in a relationship when I got uncomfortable. Now I'm more willing to have that conversation even if it's uncomfortable, because I have relationships in business that have continued on because of an uncomfortable conversation. Now, I'm a business owner, um, but um, that's been a lesson for me, is to let myself get a little uncomfortable and not just end a relationship. I also run, which is very uncomfortable, so that fits into the finish line. <laughs> so, Don, did that help you? Oh, you did good. You unmuted yourself. I was hoping you would go further with that. Uh, yes, no, I did. Thank you very much. And it's uh, just to clarify, it, it's not the um, disrespectful. It's it's the microaggressions. It's uh, I work for a general contractor, and I have hundreds of subcontractors that I, I I manage. And 
manage relationships with. And, and there's some really great ones out there and there's some really tough ones out there. And it's, you know, it's a challenge to um, maintain that relationship and get them to keep coming back to me and bid my work all the time when I don't feel a connection there or I feel some sort of grading. And, and I, I appreciate all your feedback on that. That's um, certainly something I'll keep in mind moving forward. Thank you. Well, any other questions over there? What about you, ladies? Do you guys have questions or comments? You were asking earlier about things we do, that they shouldn't do, the mistakes that we've made. And I think one of the mistakes that I've made is saying yes to all. Oh. When somebody asks for you to do something, it's so hard to tell them, no, I won't do that. Uh, I'm not interested or I'm not willing to spend my time on that when they're pressuring you to be on a committee or yeah, I, I have a sticky note on my computer that just says just say no because I have to it's get it can get a lot. So I know it's not easy. Sometimes I just have to say I, I can't fit it in. Yeah. And there's no added explanation. Right. Jane Fonda, who I love, um, she said one of the most freeing times in her adult womanhood was when she realized that no was a complete sentence. And I read that, and I was, it was like such an epiphany. And I was like, I don't have to say no. Make up excuses, but, yeah. And, and, n no. Right, hard, like, it's okay to say no. And just no. You know, that's it. Yeah, and, and not to worry, not worry so much about the reaction on the other side. And, and I've made a lot of mistakes by saying um, too many yeses, um, mm -hmm. especially in business because of, um, sometimes because of money. I'm a small business, it's me, right. and I have freelancers, and oh, I could do that, I could fit that in, but if it, if, it, if it doesn't feel right, I'm getting better at listening to my gut regardless of the money. Mm. And it works for you guys, though. I mean, it's, it's proven. Right? It's uncomfortable, I mean, it, but yeah. It's uncomfortable, but it's proven. And you're happier on the other end because exactly. you don't have too much stuff, and you're able to exactly. devote more time to. And you're doing what you genuinely love. Yeah, you do what you love. I've had a couple of situations where it was um, with a firm that was a repeat client, architecture firm, and we get into a sticky situation where I have to sit up, stand up for myself and I'm mm -hmm. like, will I work with these guys again? And afterwards, uh, after sticking up for myself and stating my case and being like, no, this is the right thing mm -hmm. because in landscape architecture, there's lots of pushback from the contractor. She's stupid. Why would she tell you to do that? Blah, 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 blah. Well, anyways, uh, sticking up for yourself and saying, no, this is the right way. This is really what we should be doing. Wondering if that, me being um, as a serial, hmm. maybe a little bit, would ruin my relationship. And then turn around the next day and get another proposal from that same architecture firm, even though I just told this client that he's full of hot air. Mm -hmm. um, it it works. It, you really do. It, mm -hmm. If you repeatedly, I feel like some of these younger professionals, if they had the years that we've had to deal with all this garbage, they would see that. Yeah, it's it's worth it. It actually works, and it's it will make your life better. <laughs> and some, sometimes it's something that, and I'm talking more like personal, like volunteerism. Sometimes it's something that I really want to do, but I just know now that I can't take on everything. And so I just say, can you circle back with me in a year or two? You know, like yeah. I'm taking on this now mm -hmm. and, you know, I have I'm to like prioritize. Yeah. So I instead, you know, sometimes because I, I don't want to give them an excuse, I just want to say like, God, I'd really love to do that, but right now I can't take that on. Because I'm doing, because I'm already committed to this. Yeah, and you can get pushback on that mm -hmm. stuff, but you just and then they'll circle theory. back where they might not. But you know, yeah. it's, it's just, just a risk. My mom always says, "Good fences make good neighbors." <laughs> I don't think she came up with that. I think she stole it. <laughs> but it's true. You know, your boundaries make good relationships with your neighbor. Like, I and for whatever reason, like just. I think like that dream to said the takeaway is to just be yourself. You know, if it doesn't fit into your life, it doesn't fit into what you want to do, it doesn't make any sense, no thank you. 
at the end of the day, at least, you can look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. What else you got, Monica? Um, that that kind of covers everything that I had written down and a couple of other okay. things that I had mentioned along the way. Um, but if you guys have anything for us? Like, what are some good takeaways? I think that we kind of outlined a couple of things here and there along the way. Like, um, uh, let's see. I mean, like, I, you go ahead. I was just going to say, I wrote down, I, I think of best practices when I'm, and, and like I, um, Ruth, sorry, was saying, forgive me, Ruth was saying, like, she's an introvert. And I can tell you right now that in my professional life, I'm much more outgoing and confident. And in my personal life, I'm a little bit more, you know, it's harder for me. So I have some best practices, and I call them the VIPs. So these are my personal things that I make sure I always do. So personal or professional is stay visible. It's easy for me in my personal life to just, you know, want to be the quiet one, shy in the corner in the room. But um, so I try to always stay visible, whether that's social media, friends, you know, what we, what, everything we talked about. The I is get involved. For me, um, one of the reasons I, for me, if I don't know anybody, then I'm going to be the invisible person in the corner. So for me, I have to get involved. That's why when I join an organization, I try to get on a committee or take a leadership role. That's the best way for me to build confidence. Um, the other, the P can be a few things, but for mine, it's um, use your presence. So whether you have to just take a deep breath, never let them see you sweat, um, be positive. And I always say, you know, also my presence is be authentic, be yourself, and, you know, be the best person that you can be. So that's kind of my VIP. So when I'm doing things that I'm uncomfortable with, I kind of just check myself on those things and just take a deep breath, and, I, and, I, and I'm good. So it's, it's not easy even for, um, you know, us here on the panel purporting to be the experts on networking. It's still, we still have to, to practice those things and take a deep breath. You know when we're going into certain situations, so and it's still draining. I don't. I yeah. mean, I think people assume that because I'm good at it, they're like, "Oh, Nancy loves it." <laughs> I really don't. Um, it's work. It's you know, it's, it's my job. It is work. Constantly putting yourself out there, constantly being present. You know, being involved. It is work. I mean, even I told a friend of mine. Um, she was like, "Let's do da 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 at seven o'clock." And at three o'clock, I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." And I said, "But." <laughs> I may call you at 5 o'clock and say, I'm passed out. And I already prepped her because I wasn't sure how this event would leave me as far as energy and effort, and I might just want to just decompress and be with myself. Um, so it's not always easy, you know, doing networking and, you know, working on your brand and pushing your business forward and, you know, staying involved. Um, but I think the more you know yourself, the more you can put in things that you can preserve yourself, um, and then you can better present yourself when the time is right. Mm -hmm. And there's some things that I, I let go. There are certain groups in town, to be totally frank, that I'm like, this feels like middle school click yeah. stuff. And it is so much work to penetrate these girl groups, and I'm just like, am I 14 again? <laughs> and I'm like, this isn't oh, worth it, there. you know? And um, <laughs> these aren't the women I want to work with. Um, so it, it's not easy, but um, I am very intentional. I love the intentional thing, and yeah, all I would add to that is, I tend to only regret the things I don't do. However, um, I regret the things to do that I do when I'm in the wrong headspace to your point. Right. So I give myself permission to change my mind, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know that I'm not going to present the best possible version of myself if, you know, there's breaking news and I'm helping media and I'm tapped out. So, yeah, give, give yourself permission to change your mind, and that's not weakness. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Well, uh, and so I'm glad that we hit that for the end because um, here we are at the end of almost 90 minutes. Wow. I know, right? So fast. It goes by so cutie up there. I know. Uh, uh, that would be Nahar, uh, who Dad also gave the name of Ripley after um, the Sigourney Weaver uh, character. <laughs> because, you know, strong-willed little, little creature that she Aww. is. Um, I, I know, right? <laughs> um, 
So thank you all for joining us. Um, thank you, guys. You being hi, Linda. Here. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, hi, Linda. Being here. <laughs> um, kind of a kind of a big deal, very uncomfortable topic for me, honestly, because uh, I know there are things I need to do and things that I do and don't do well. <laughs> so, just a deep breath. Do you feel less? <laughs> did you feel like this conversation made you less? Yeah, uncomfortable. More stressed out. Uncomfortable on networking. <laughs> Uh, on networking, maybe, because some of the things I've been thinking about um, in the past, well, in the past year, I've had a lot of time to think, um, you know, are things like I, I just don't have time to be that uncomfortable when I walk into spaces. So if I don't look like everybody else, it's okay. okay. Like if I walk into a space and I'm the only one in a suit or in jeans, whatever it is, and everybody else is in something else, and I just have to own that and go, okay, off we go. We're just going to do whatever we're going to do. So, and it's uh, trying to find that confidence in myself to go keep moving forward is what I'm going to have to do. Um, and I just realized last year that I'm a principal of a firm. <laughs> <laughs> just last year. Just last year. And we just celebrated our 10 years. So it's like, how did you just Ooh. now figure that out? It's taken so long. So sometimes you need uh, you need to come out of your a lot of your spaces. But I also think, no, if you're not a... Facebook Live two minute person, yeah. don't do that. Because yeah. for me, I'm going to see them be like, she's awkward. <laughs> and I don't want to work with this awkward person. As opposed to, and this is what I told you before <laughs> privately, you know, you're so committed to community and there's so much goodness in your work and your mission. Relish in that. Talk about that. And the more conversations about the good work you're doing, more people who are doing good work want to be a part of that that's and want to change the world, in. right, and be impactful. And that's not as uncomfortable for you no. to be like, the world needs to be better, and I want to be a part of that. Oh, you raising conversations. Yeah. <laughs> I, need to bring those I, I need to start yeah. up raising conversations. It's raising just, conversations. I love that. Yeah, Why so are you we, not doing that? Because I don't have time. Oh, I hear you. And there was time a pandemic. Was and, and there was a pandemic, pandemic, so that didn't help. <laughs> but um, that was a pretty good thing. I'll tell you about that offline. I love to, that. We used to do that. And it was a good thing, and uh, there was a nonprofit group that actually wanted to uh, start it up again. I'm like, I, I, I don't have time. You did brand layering with a different nonprofit each time we did one. <gasps> I did do that. That was an accident because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Just own it. Say it was yeah. deliberate. I meant, I meant, I meant to we do have that. More I love raising conversations. Maybe we cool. need to do revolutionary conversations. There you go. That's awesome. So, all right. Um, okay, you have like nothing. Our, our anyone have anything else? I see that Linda has lit herself. I thought maybe she wanted yeah. to say something. All good? I'm looking. Um, actually, I did have, um, hello, girls. I, I've been listening the whole time. I've been kind of multitasking here, but hello, hello, hello. Um, hello. So one thing I wanted to um, talk about, and Dawn, this might help you too. Um, I actually, I have my own business, like Ruth. Um, not quite the same genre, but my own business. And I, my clients are general contractors. And so I am talking with mostly men. There's maybe one or two women. Anne is one of them. Um, she's not a general contractor where I did the project. But nonetheless, um, if they're dishing out, they should be able to take it. That part. So, oh. yeah, so when I'm talking with somebody, you know, a, a, a GC on a site that I'm walking with them, like I was walking a site the other day, I mean, they, they are used to pushback. They are used to having to explain themselves. And I think a lot of them, they've gotten much better with the whole gender thing going on. Um, and being respectful of that, but there are still times that they forget. And so if they say something like, thanks, sweetie, or something, you go, oh, gosh, I only let my husband say, say that to me. And then they go, oh, you know, sometimes they do. Sometimes they just write off and that's them. But sometimes they just need a gentle reminder. And I have found that humor or calling them out in, in a different way than saying, you can't call me that kind of thing is a better way to go. Um, it doesn't mean that we're backing down in any way, shape or form. It just means that we're making them aware that they need to change their ways still. 
give them an out. Give them an yes. out gracefully to get out of the situation <laughs> and apologize. Help them and out. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think there's such negative connotations to ignorance, and ignorance is just not knowing. Um, there are times that men, in, even at Revolution, will say things that I'm like, and I'll listen, and they'll be like, oh, my gosh, I was at so-and-so meeting, and this woman was just out of line and rude, and I didn't like how she spoke to me, and I'm listening, and I'm like, well, what did she say? And then they break it down, and I'm like, can you close your eyes for a second and put it in a different vessel? Would you Would you be upset? Because most of our guys are used to hearing all sorts of things and all sorts of tones with all sorts of profanity. Uh But when it comes from someone who looks like us, it's like, well, excuse my language, she's a bitch and I don't want to work with her. Mm -hmm. And it's like she's a leader and she's strong and she knows she has to communicate and articulate because she's often silent. Um, So when you have those relationships with men and you hear things that are like mildly questionable and you have that freedom to have that conversation, have those conversations because you're affecting the space long term, you know. So I often tell my guys, yo, that was that was kind of crazy what came out your mouth. Hmm. And they're like, yeah. really, why? And I'm like, well, let me explain it to you. And then hopefully the next time when a woman challenges them at the next meeting and some guy's like, oh, that bitch, and they stop, she'll be like, no, no, she's not doing anything wrong that anything that John didn't just do. That's that's beautiful because mm-hmm. you don't have a dog to fight. You're just there saying, "Well, let's just take a couple steps back and look at this from a different side of the point." Mm-hmm. Right. Taking a step back rather than being emotional like I used to be and being like, "I'm out of here. Right. I want to protect my comfort." Mm-hmm. How many times did we leave a space because we were like, "That's offensive," and now there's no one in the room? Mm-hmm. Good point. Well, and, we and the other part of that that's important to call it out when it happens is because of the other men that are in the room at the same time. Because if you speak to that one person outside of the meeting after, hey, look, guy, what you said really wasn't kosher, Um, don't do it again, or it would be better if you said it this way, the other 18 guys that were in that room didn't hear that, and they they haven't been enlightened. So that's why it's... (laughs) So right on, so positive stuff. Um, all right, we're going to have to end there because we are ahead. Um, Women's playing it. I love it, Dawn. Women's playing it. Women's playing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks. All right, um, we're out. Oh, and thanks, Glenn. Thank, Glenn. Thank, Thank you. Uh, one brave Thank dude. You. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, Glenn, how Thank you. Okay, after all, Bye-bye. Is Glenn still there? What is he having? Can we still? Oh, we're not getting to the count yet. One second. I like that Bye. though.